compare results. You will notice in the method above that the variables were identified and one was controlled. That is, it remained the same for each of the experiments conducted, while the other was manipulated. That is, it was changed for each of the experiments conducted. The controlled variables were the volume of vitamin C solution titrated, the concentration of iodine solution, the volume of starch indicator used, and the temperature at which the titration is carried out. The manipulated variable was the use of heat-treated and non-heat-treated vitamin C solution. This meant that if there was any difference in the results obtained, it must be due only to the fact that the heat was varied for each of the experiments conducted. The responding variable was a tighter volume of iodine solution or concentration of vitamin C solution. The next step is to write out your expected results. The word expected is used because remember you have not carried out your investigation. It is very important that your expected results agree with your hypothesis. That no values are given since you have not carried out the investigation and also that you clearly state how the results will be treated. Treatment of results. Calculate the number of moles in the volume of solution A. Calculate the concentration of vitamin C in solution A. Calculate the number of moles in the volume of solution B. Calculate the concentration of vitamin C in solution B. Expected results. The concentration of vitamin C should be lower in solution B than in solution A. If the concentrations for both vitamin C solutions differ in that the concentration of vitamin C in solution B is less than in solution A, then the data collected supports the hypothesis. If the concentrations for both vitamin C solutions are equal, or the vitamin C concentration in solution A is greater than in solution B, then the data collected does not support the hypothesis. Limitations, sources of error, or assumptions. These should be clearly identified and are the factors that could affect the results. Assumption. Vitamin C is not affected by shaking. Assumption. Starch is an efficient indicator for this experiment. Limitation. Iodine solution is a poor standard as its concentration cannot be reliably predicted from the solid weighed out due to its tendency to sublime and its insolubility in water. Note well that a limitation is a source of error which the experimenter may have no control over due to the method chosen and which ultimately affects the reliability of the results obtained. Here is a sample mark scheme for planning and designing. Clearly stated hypothesis that is testable, two marks. Aim relevant to the problem, one mark. Apparatus and materials listed are appropriate to the method, one mark. The steps are written in numbered steps, logically sequenced using standard English and in the present tense, two marks. Method chosen should be able to test hypotheses and fulfill aim, two marks. Clear treatment of variables, manipulated, controlled and responding, three marks. Expected results. Data to be collected clearly represented. Type of data collected, whether it is qualitative and or quantitative, should be apparent. If results are to be tabulated, an example of the results table should be presented. If results are to be presented graphically, a sketch of the graph is expected. Two marks. Clearly stated expected results in qualitative terms which should be reasonable and based on current knowledge, two marks. Clearly stated interpretation of predicted results that ideally supports or rejects hypothesis, 
two marks. Limitations, sources of error or assumptions, any two scientifically sound examples, two marks.